Hi, I am Alexis Kraslovsky. Thank you for letting me come today to talk about the film Let Them Eat Cake. I would like to ask you about the ethics of concentrating on refinements of food and pastry construction in a time of famine. Well, quite honestly, I wanted to lure in audience members who are not already activists to open their eyes, ears, and their mouth to the beauty of pastries and then to get them to examine it a little more closely. Pastry is not just an enemy, it's a cultural artifact. And in fact, we try to include some of the best pastries from the entire world, uh, from patisseries in France and pastry schools in Lima, Peru, and traditional Japanese bakeries that supply the cherry blossom pastries for the tea ceremonies in Japan. There are actually five major religions in our film, and we try to honor the spirituality that pastry can represent. For example, there is a Hindu temple where the farmer is hitting the gong, praying for his crop which has been devastated by not just drought, but chemicals like Monsanto in a region where at least 200,000 farmers have committed suicide. There's also the uh, Christian religion represented by the Mexican Day of the Dead, where a, a woman in a rural village is making las bortitas and los caballitos to put on the graves of her ancestors to honor their transition to the other world. And we have uh, Shodo Harada Roshi, the Zen Buddhist abbot in a monastery in Okayama, Japan, who is explaining that there cannot be true peace in the world without a balance between those who have too much to eat and those who don't have enough to eat. Shodo Harada Roshi says the following, for everything to be peaceful in society, foodstuffs must be distributed harmoniously, that is to say, equally. It means, therefore, that if everything is received equally, it will allow peace to occur. However, if we look at the actual situation in the world, what we see is that even though in one evening there may be people spending tens of thousands of yen on high-priced meals, there are those who have nothing to eat and live in abject poverty. There are actually many people today who live like that in terrible straits. And therefore, my meaning is that peace does not exist in this world. One probable cause of contemporary social malaise is that there are people with plenty of food, while at the same time there are those who have nothing to eat. This isn't a problem for people who have plenty of food to eat, but a problem for those who have none. It means that equal food distribution is fundamental for constructing a society in which there is true peace. It's just so pitifully momentary. It's just like, you know, as soon as you're done eating that Twinkie or that cookie, it's like, okay, it didn't work always, so I'll try another one, and pretty soon you have the whole box done, and it just didn't work, so you had to keep going. I understand why somebody would turn to heroin. But heroin is just a temporary fix, but then it wears off, and you have to have more. It's not lasting. This is the poem from the film Let Them Eat Cake. Pastryology, the pastry shop of dreams, where dreams are made of chocolate, melting in the hot afternoon. Dreams of chocolatey heaven in a cake of cloud-like mousse. Dreams that float like fairy dust from magical wands. Wands exploding like rifles. Royalties, let them eat cake reverberates as we watch the pastries leer back at us with hungry eyes swallowing their smiles. Somewhere a girl calls sugar and honey 
eats a dozen donuts at a throw, along with cakes and cupcakes, along with the guilt of privilege, poison apples of her soul. No more cakes and cupcakes filled with plastic clouds. No more sugar till our teeth fall out, till our eyes are blinded to the sacraments of corn by Monsanto. 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 Till our feet fall off and we can no longer walk through the fields where the wheat once grew and our mouths can no longer shout injustice. All in the world, sugar is just too sweet. All over the world, sugar is just too sweet.